Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will discuss what a stereo EEG is, the history of the stereo EEG, who is eligible to have one, what are the benefits, how to prepare for one, how a stereo EEG is performed, what to expect after, and risk. Make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. Please click on our donate link at the top of our channel and donate today. Your donation helps us make a difference for those battling epilepsy. We appreciate your support. According to Cleveland Clinic, a stereo electroencephalography also known as an SEEG or stereo EEG, is a minimally invasive surgical procedure that is used to precisely find the areas of the brain where seizures originate. Stereo EEGs are used to pinpoint the area that seizure activity is taking place and can find more information than an EEG. The stereo EEG was created by Jean Tellerac a French neurosurgeon, and Jean Bacot, a French neurologist and neurophysiologist. In the article, The History of Invasive EEG Evaluation in Epilepsy Patients, Tellerac was working with stereotactic procedures. He worked to improve the implantation technique, to find a system of reference lines and structures that allowed an individualized and optimized approach for investigations of deep brain structures and their anatomical localization. Years later, Talarak met Bacot, a neurologist and neurophysiologist interested in EEG. Together, the two advanced stereotactic techniques in epilepsy patients. Through learning about the depth electrodes that had to be placed and where, it gave Talarak and Bacot access to examining seizure patterns. It allowed longer recording and allowed neurologists and neurosurgeons to have a resource in finding specifically where a seizure was taking place in order to decide if surgery was a solution to controlling seizure activity. According to Cleveland Clinic, if you have been diagnosed with focal epilepsy and experience complex partial seizures that do not respond to medication treatment, you are a potential candidate for surgery. If you have had tests such as an EEG and MRI and doctors cannot locate where seizure activity is coming from, you are a candidate for a stereo EEG. Stereo EEGs give the neurologist and neurosurgeon the chance to pinpoint where seizure activity is coming from. Patients with refractory epilepsy, also known as drug-resistant epilepsy, can have a stereo EEG done to locate where their seizures are located in the brain. Once a location is found, doctors can do further testing to make sure there will be no risk in removing the part of the brain. Before the procedure, your doctor will review your medical history and may order some tests before scheduling the procedure. It is important to answer all questions and comply with what the doctor needs before having the procedure. A stereo EEG takes one to two hours to perform. Patients are put under general anesthesia. Once asleep, the surgeon drills several very small axis holes around 2.3 millimeters in diameter into the skull. Around 10 to 15 electrodes are placed in the brain where physicians suspect seizure activity is taking place. The purpose of the test is to map out where seizure activity is taking place and locate important functioning areas such as speech. Once a procedure is completed, a CAT scan is performed and the patient is taken back to the epilepsy monitoring unit for observation. Patients can be kept for days while the team gathers the necessary information. Patients will be slowly taken off their anticonvulsant medication to gather seizure activity. Once the mapping is completed and any seizure activity is collected, the patient is taken back to surgery to have the electrodes removed. 
Patients are kept overnight for observation and are allowed to go home the next day. The neurologist and EMU team will consult with the patient to let them know the test results and if they are a candidate for surgery. A few weeks after testing, if a patient is eligible for surgery, the surgical team will contact the patient to plan surgery. According to the University of Pittsburgh, options for surgeries are craniectomy of removal of the seizure focus, laser ablation of the seizure focus, and neuromodulation including RNS, DBS, and VNS. Like all procedures, SEEGs have risk, even though the statistics are very low. According to the article, Stereoelectroencephalography, Indication and Efficiency, the pooled prevalence, which is a statistical measuring technique, was low. Major complications of SEEG were intracerebral hemorrhages and infections. Permanent neurological deficits accounted for 0.6% and mortality rates are 0.5%, primarily due to intracerebral hematoma due to electoral placement. In conclusion, according to Cleveland Clinic, a stereoelectroencephalography, also known as an SEEG or stereoEEG, is a minimally invasive surgical procedure that is used to precisely find the areas of the brain where seizures originate. Stereo EEGs are used to pinpoint the area that seizure activity is taking place and can find more information than an EEG. Individuals who are battling focal epilepsy and are experiencing complex partial seizures are candidates for a stereo EEG. Once the area where seizure activity is discovered, doctors can decide if surgery is an option. Stereo EEGs are low risk to have. According to the University of Pittsburgh, options for surgery are craniectomy for removal of the seizure focus, laser ablation of the seizure focus, and neuromodulation including RNS, DBS, and VNS. To learn more about stereo EEGs, please check out the resources used in the presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on our social media pages. Subscribe to our bi-weekly newsletter for our latest articles and more information. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.